Welcome to the Brook, bearing clusters of truth with a splash of common sense. Episode number nine. We are about to hit double digits, gentlemen. Can you believe it? It's amazing. Welcome. I'm under a lot of pressure. Are you? Nice. Are you? Don't you feel it? You feel nervous? Nervous. The fact that we've made it this far is and no one shut us off yet. Yeah, no. exactly. And, and we I think there's a lot listening. of people shutting us off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we still have people listening, so that says something. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to the Brook again. Episode number nine. David, welcome. Thank you, Pastor Reeves. Hey, Pete. Hi. JT up in the sound booth, which of course. He never you would shower me someday. We'll get him. Uh, is this a plug? Is that what you call that? What you're doing right now? Wow, <sighs> man! What in the world? When you drink things out of this that mug, that's just like so rude. When you drink things out of this mug, it's even it, better. They taste better. It tastes better. What are you drinking? I now? don't know. I don't know if it's because it was made in China <laughs> or what. But <laughs> <laughs> and what were you drinking out of that? I was drinking. If you're listening, <laughs> out of the special edition a COVID the, nineteen the special Brooke brew coffee mug. I love Brooke. <laughs> and if you're wondering what's in this, you'll just have to stay tuned until the end of the broadcast. That's right. You're going to wait until I'm the end. I'm going to wait until the end. Well, we should put out a poll. Let's yeah, there you comes. go. Now, what we'll, is Brother David? We love to hear from our listeners during the show, and we would like to hear from you. Um, you can uh, get in touch with us throughout the show by requesting a song um, from our Keenan Radio Library. You can send us a text, 920-940-8275. You can use... Uh, Twitter or Instagram to get a hold of us as well. Canaan underscore radio is our uh, username. Or you can write a letter and send it to us in the uh, mail. I, I wouldn't do that. It'd take too long, but you can... Okay. Snail mail. You can try. Um, and then if we have that song, we'll play it during the show as time allows. Again, that number is 920-940-8275. And on social media, it's at Canaan underscore radio. And uh, last week's episode is available. Hallelujah. And so is the, the, last, the <laughs> three. last three episodes are finally available on YouTube and on uh, wherever podcasts can be listened to. Are so. sold. Apple Podcasts, that's yes. where I listen to it. I actually get a little notification. Goes, bloop, bloop. Is me. that how it goes? Bloop, bloop. How's that again? Yeah. One more time. <laughs> wow. bloop, bloop. Someone, create a, someone create a notification text, text, zone, <laughs> text tone out of that and send it to us. So. Bloop, bloop. Gentlemen, we have arrived at Open Mic. Hey, All right. great, exciting week this week. We've gotten a lot done. I uh, can't hear you. You've got Sorry. I have a. Uh, there we go. Our Can church. You tighten that, Pete. Please. Really, it's fine. It's right. good. I moved it down oh, there. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I like because you were speaking in the. We can't hear you. you. Can't really hear right. <laughs> Just want to. I want everyone to hear your golden voice and what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Positive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll get we're, to talking wow. about the title of today's episode here. What were you talking about? Something, something good. Let this somebody week? else start. I need to get my composure. It's been an exciting week. week. It has been an exciting week. It's been, it's been a good week. I've gotten a lot done. I know David and I, we've gotten a lot done. So, and I'm going to talk about something. I can't later, hear you. But... You need to speak in your mic. Is it better? <laughs> So what did you do? What, what did you? What, yeah, tell us about it. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what's going on? You, if you, you, you. <laughs> so far, we haven't talked about anything. No, we haven't. We are still in open mic. Dad, go ahead. I'm excited. We're going to have a conference room. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, it's not a big diet, big big thing to you guys. I'm it stoked. Is. But to it's, me, it is. Me? It's sharp. We got the uh, uh, two of the sconces put up today, and mm-hmm. the big screen, 65 inch. <laughs> Is that bigger than cheaper? this one? It's bigger than this yeah, one, yeah. It's bigger than that's that's what is this? That's this 55. is 55? Yeah. yeah. It's like... Mm, 65 massive. inch. The um, There's some work left to be done. With the can lights need to be going. We're going to take the fluorescents out and put can lights in and a couple other things. And we've got some trim work left to be done. Uh, and I'm thinking about putting real wide wood floor in. Ooh. So. Nice. Be in prayer over that because that'll take about a day to do <laughs> so uh and then next week we're gonna paint our buses Woo. hopefully Woo. well i don't know if it'll be next week we Soon. either Soon. either Soon. end of next weeks. week beginning of next the, the week after that but uh, yep. uh our our city uh uh for years i guess has had a um statute a registration policy when you register your bus um, if you're not, if it's not a school bus and you're using it, you're buying a bus and you're using it for church, it's got to actually be painted some other color than yellow. 
but they have never <laughs> enforced it. Enfor- never, yeah, never. Exactly. I didn't even know it. So yeah. evidently it's been that way. And some because of the COVID-19 and the government agencies kind of combining to consolidate, somebody had actually um, known that law that isn't normally in that office. Mm-hmm. And so they rejected our request to register our bus until it gets painted. So, which is no big deal. I mean, we were going to do it. Eventually. Yeah, we're going to do it. Now it just means that Christy has to find the money for us to do it. So, <laughs> but the good, the bright side, of it. there goes the wood floor in the conference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And the rest of the conference room. Yeah, pretty much. Right. We're going to be selling down. this table. <laughs> hmm. But it's going it to be off. so nice. We're going to have, we have three buses. They're all going to be the same color. No more will it say community. Uh, Whatever. No, it's just community, blacked out. Yeah, community blacked out. <laughs> One of them out. says community <laughs> school district or something. I always I always think it off. says community church or something. Well, we, we like all of our stuff to be first class. And the honest truth is that all our previous buses uh, were gas engine buses, and they were all painted. Mm-hmm. We had them all painted. They matched. They looked sharp. But when we replaced them, we went to diesel, of course, and got them from out of state. So we just hadn't had the time moving into this building, doing all the work we had. Anyway, mm-hmm. so it's just something that had to be done. And with our ministries come somewhat changing because of what's going on in our country, it's given us some time to, to do that. So we're not traveling. We've canceled all our trips and inside a trip. You know, we're not having people in anymore right now. And mm-hmm. so... We're going to see if we can't uh, fixate ourselves on the gas, uh, on paint fumes. Paint fumes. Amen. Yeah. There we go. Hey. That'll be a good end, honey, when that comes up. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I just thought of another, another we really We should broadcast thing. that. Paint oh, the bus. Oh, boy. Watch yeah. live. As we paint As our we <laughs> Watch paint dry. <laughs> I heard you. I, I heard you. I heard you just now. They got they got nothing better to, to, to do right now. So. What are you they're all sitting at home. I'm so confused at what, what you said. Because God whenever saying, everybody talks, it's like, I can't hear you. Oh, yeah. when he's like, oh we're going to do it now. I, didn't, I was like, I was so confused. I was yeah, so lost. I, said, Whoa, I, I just, oh, did, the- I skipped right over it. Well, you know, they have, they actually have some of those uh, like broadcasts. I don't I, like that are just like on animals, like in the safari or whatever. Like, and here is the eagle. And, but there's no and narration. The and it just, just sits there for like 24 hours. And everyone's sure, just waiting. Sure. Yeah, we could do that Cricket, for the bus Cricket. thing. You know, you're, you know, this this whole shutdown has done some really weird things to people. <laughs> the, the the C's actually put a video out on Facebook about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. What I didn't hey. see that. Yeah, yeah. And they only in the put whole Facebook? video. They have they have four kids, so they gave four ways to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Mm. And then the last way was the right way, according to Pastor C. <laughs> and, and what was it? What his was, was it? toasted. Oh, he toasted the bread. The it. thing is, is they were all wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because who in the world makes half a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? I make a whole peanut butter or something. Dad, Dad, I use one jar of peanut of butter just for one. To a recession. <laughs> That's why you're not sitting down here. <laughs> That's the famine yeah, exactly. size. They're, 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 <laughs> they're liberals. <laughs> there they are. Liberals. There you go. I, I'll tell you what. Wait, question though. Did they toast before or after they added the peanut butter? Who does that? <laughs> I am asking. No, the real question is, did they add the controversy of crunchy versus creamy peanut butter? No, Ooh. it was creamy, Jeff. Uh, oh, no. Crunchy all With the way. Jelly. It's two With grape jelly. It's two fails. It was grape jelly. Crunchy. Oh, that's another strawberry jelly. Grape jelly is good. Strawberry is good. Strawberry is the best. Well, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, when you're that bored, this quarantine's really going to your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? We're going to go ahead and move on. We're going to the first song. We're going to do our best to try and, conf- I say confine ourselves, <laughs> quarantine ourselves to exact time segments allotted. For ah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> that ain't. It's not. Well, we're going to try. We're going to try. We will do our best. Pray and we're actually us. starting, we're going to go to the song about a minute early. Can you believe that? <laughs> Last week's episode is available as a podcast on our website. Remember, you can request a song during the show by texting us 920-940-8275 or on Twitter and Instagram using our handle at Canaan underscore radio. Up first, we've got He Bore It All by Ed Russ and the Old Fashioned Quartet. We'll be right back. For breaking news here and around the country, welcome to Heard It Through the Grapevine. The spin starts here. Welcome to Heard It Through the Grapevine, where we bring news and tidbits from the ministry here at North Platte Baptist Church or other places, depending on how we feel. What do you feel like? How do you feel like tonight? <laughs> hey, listen, I just think it's business as usual for us, and I'm, I'm enjoying having church and the bus ministry. Obviously, we've consolidated and, and uh, encouraged folks that are older not to come, and 
If you're sick, bus ministry has been given their infrared temperature gaugers, and before a kid leaves the front mm-hmm. door, temperature's got to be taken, and if they don't pass, uh, they go to purgatory. <laughs> they, they're not allowed to come. <laughs> back, right, so. back home you yeah. go. Purgatory. Uh, you know, so, but uh, that's, that's good. And, and then mm-hmm. the... Um, I would just simply say that uh, I'm, I'm very pleased and excited about how our government, our state government, is working with our, our daycares, or our daycares are working with our state government. Things are going well there with stimulus package being passed and then uh, arrangements made for financing and things like that. That's, that's good for our parents. Mm-hmm. So, Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, on the bus ministry side of things, it was a blessing today. Are you going to talk about that? I was, but go you, ahead. No, you, no, you, 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 I was just, you, okay. you, 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 no, wow. you, no, you do it. <laughs> Spit it out, bro. <laughs> so Kaylee and uh, my sister Hope, they went out today and they went back to someone that Kaylee's actually been visiting for quite a while and they were catch, able to catch them at home. Were they heading? And uh, I think, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, they signed one up. There's a kiddo who's going to be riding the bus tomorrow. That's awesome. Amen. So, Amen. And it's on the now, center of town. It's right. on the new it's, bus it's route. It's on our, uh, the so brand new bus route. So Now, when we talk to the parents, we, we tell them that we, right. you know, she did. We're, we're not offended at all if they don't want to let their kids come. Right. And, so it was very, not, not pushy, like, hey, come well, tomorrow. We're yeah. going to miss out on the greatest thing ever. It was, you know, we got church tomorrow. And then Kaylee actually said that she went over all the things that we were doing to, you know. We're still out. handing out those little coronavirus update flyers that talk about some of the precautionary things that we're doing. Right. So, but so. the mom was... Are you talking about these? No. No, they're, no. they're actual bus flyers. Like little bus flyers. So. Oh, right, right, They've right. got like a kid yeah. cartoon a little thing on them. green germ anyway, on it. But these are good. Those are good. Yeah. Are these good? These Where still available? Those? Those are these are on our available. store? Our yeah. store live it's, yet? It's not live yet. Store's not up yet. But our new website is canyonmedia.co. That's not, we brand. have we have not shared that. We haven't anyway. shared it. We haven't shared anything about the store. We will share that later. Right. Because we're gonna we're gonna share it later. But um, last week we actually had concerning that the new route, mm-hmm. we had uh, Brother JT had some visitors that sort of showed up out of the blue. I mean, he's been visiting them for about three weeks or so. Mm-hmm. And uh, but they just the dad decided to come with his two boys last week and one of the boys was in my class and he ended up getting saved. And is, yeah. did, was he home today? You're, okay, we're gonna. I know we're visiting him later tonight, but uh, we're excited. He's gonna be riding the bus tomorrow, so mm-hmm. that's the plan anyway. Praise the Lord! Okay. And, we, and we may have a baptism. We might have a baptism. Oh, so the just moving along. We'll have to change meeting. the water afterwards. Oh, I, I got one more thing. Last <laughs> last week we were dropping off, off some kids, and right across not across the street, but the house right next door. There was a little girl outside playing, and the kids that we dropped off were friends with her. So I just walked over, talked to her a little bit, and talked to her mom, signed her up for the bus route, and she's supposed to be riding the bus tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It's It's been a good day. It has been. Out soul winning in the rain during coronavirus. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing. I encourage these pastors, um, just do what's best for your area, and God will will bless. And I know I was in uh, Walmart today, and one of our old, old members that uh, from years past, and he still shows up every once in a while, he's an older fella, uh, stopped me, and uh, we were talking some health issues about him, and he said, you still having church? I said, yes, sir, we still having church. He goes, really? And I said, yes, sir. He said, that's great. So, Very hey, good. When we talked to that sure? lady at the ice cream store today. Yeah, she was excited. She was, what would she, I, I heard her talking to you guys, but not... I didn't hear what she said. We said a little bit about the, about what the daycares, because you had mentioned the daycare mm-hmm. and how they were connected to the church. So mm-hmm. we said something about the church. And then I think, did you talk to her more? Because I didn't say anything really after that. No. Okay. <laughs> so we basically no. just told her about church and yeah. services and how we've, you know, kind of been doing things. I thought you had more of a conversation, whatever. I, th- I overheard you talking to her about. Well, she's keeping her open. ice cream place open and she's been selling a lot of ice cream through Facebook. And cool. as I don't call care, uh, survival Sun- packages Sundays. is what she yeah. calls them. Ice cream survival oh, oh, packages. Oh, no, she goes, weekend? No, not Sunday. It was something else. But you're right, yes. I thought it but, was. but she was just telling me about it, and she goes, I just feel like, you know, we need to stay open in our community. We need to keep things going. I said, well, good. Well, it's yeah. funny because I only overheard the part of she said something about how she put it on social media, and she was selling a lot of, I thought she said, Survival Sunday yes. packets, yes. Yes. something like that. Yeah, was, yeah. And I'm thinking, what's happening on Sunday? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, do we need to do we need to prepare for something? Because am I missing yeah. it? Do I need to order one of these things? And it just clicked. Now that it was Sunday, like <laughs> ice cream Sunday. He's not the uh, sharpest crayon in the box. <laughs> it's spelled 
A my, E at the end. <laughs> my light flickers <laughs> on and off at times. All right. Uh, world uh, news. Do we have any world news update? People. The United sure. States has overtaken Sick. all other countries and how many uh, COVID-19 cases we have. I heard uh, that. I think that's true. I think that's true. That is true. We have 100 and something thousand. I wonder, are we the largest country in the world? Well, it's, I don't think so. No, no well, it's probably because we can second, test third a lot largest, more people. Yeah. Third largest? JT up there, our fact yeah. checker. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of different attributes. or you know, Attributes? Uh, not attributes, different... Um, factors. Factors. Yeah. That factor into that. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, but... Not to yeah. run in fear, is, but... Yeah, is that it for, is that it yeah. for this segment? Yeah. I okay. think so. For I it, mean, I didn't hear anything fight. out of Pete. I've been commenting. Hmm. Is, I think part of our plan at some point during the broadcast is to do some call-ins. We're going to have some folks... You want me to say about... Sure. Yeah, on. I'd like some pastors to, if you're listening, to call in when we get ready. We'll let you know exactly when that is, but we're going to have you come on and say something uh, good about what God's been doing in your church since uh, the uh, lockdowns and the, some of the adjustments you've had to make towards your ministry. And we just want to hear the good this week. Uh, we're mm-hmm. not going to complain about anything. We're just going to rejoice in the Lord, and mm-hmm. and we want you to have a time and a place to... Uh, share your blessings. Maybe somebody got saved through uh, one of the drive-in services you have, or maybe you got somebody saved uh, through a live stream. They contacted you through the live stream and you called them later mm-hmm. or something like that. I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody, you know, I don't know, maybe somebody that normally would not have even discussed church was willing to have a conversation with you. But whatever it is, we'd like to hear from pastors around America. Mm-hmm. So that, that'll be coming up soon. I'd like to encourage all of our listeners to take a moment pause, get out of the YouTube app or the Kane Radio app if you're listening, and send the link to a friend, someone who's not listening right now. Encourage them to tune in, whether it be today or to watch our uh, broadcasts in the past or the recordings if they're not able to. We've got some friends that sometimes work mm-hmm. you know, during the broadcast, so they're not able to the, listen in. But. And the nice thing is you don't necessarily have to just watch it. I mean, it's true. you have a pair of earphones, you can just Put them in your, pop them in. You can still be working, and you can just listen to it if you have our app or. But why wouldn't you want to watch it? Well, I made the comment to Bud the (laughs) other day. I said, "Man, if I was listening to this, I would have to tune in and watch it because there are some things that happen." We started listening to one of the episodes that he had finished. We were watching. We were listening to the podcast version. And some of the things that we do in here, they're crazy. Like, if we started one of the episodes, <laughs> we're just like crazy. Running around. And uh, when you're listening to it, you're going, man, what in the world are those guys doing? You can't help but wish that you could watch it. So I definitely, but send them the link to the website. It's canaanradio.com slash the brook. Mm-hmm. And that will take them straight to the website. And they can click the first link on the page. It will take them to the YouTube live broadcast. So make sure you send that to somebody. Can't stress that enough. I know uh, we enjoy having the same listeners every week, but we love to add to mm-hmm. our listener base as and we go. am I right in thinking that we're suspending Grapes of Wrath this week? We are. In the so spirit of the broadcast today, that is correct. I'll be talking in the next segment about, I'll be giving a little monologue about testing positive on COVID-19. And you'll provide some clarity. I to will. The yeah, we're going to clear yeah. that up. Yeah. All right. So uh, without any further ado, um, remember you can request a song during the show by texting us at 920-940-8275 or on any of our social media using our handle at Kenan underscore radio. Our next song was requested by Lindsay, and it's the song It's Just a Book uh, by Fundamental Men Tour Group. We'll be right back. It's not milk, people. Describe what you see on this piece of paper. What would you say? You might think I was just pulling your leg at the beginning, but if I actually asked you to sit down and write a paragraph of what you see on this paper, what would you write? This question was asked to a surprised student body at a college, and the professor handed out a pop quiz, and to everyone's surprise... The only thing on the pop quiz was a little black dot and a white piece of paper. The professor stood up and he said, I want you to write a few lines about what you see on this paper. Of course, all the students were stupefied (laughs) and did not know exactly what the professor was wanting, but they had to do it because that's what he wanted. And so they all began to write and describe what they saw on the paper. A few minutes went by and the professor went around, collected all of the papers sat back down, and began to read each paper out loud. Without an exception, all the students had written about the black dot. 
mentioning about its position, its size, the color, etc. After reading all of the answers, the professor addressed the students and said this, none of you will be graded on this test, I just wanted you to ponder over something. All of you wrote about the black dot, but not one wrote about the white part that surrounded it. The same thing happens in our lives too. We all have a white paper to observe and learn from, yet we always seem to focus on the dark spots. Mm. How true is this in our lives today? Mm -hmm. God has given us so many good things to focus on, but it's easy for us to often neglect those good things and just focus and dwell on the little black dot. The same comes true of this whole pandemic and COVID-19. The disease is real and has threatened the health and livelihood of thousands. However, what if we try to focus on the white paper surrounding the black dot? What are the blessings that are in disguise? What can we take from this experience that will make us better in the long run? What are some different angles that we can approach this thing from that will show the world that Christians can not only stay positive, but joyful through the tough times and remain, po- and remain steadfast? I posted this verse on Twitter earlier this week because I thought it was a very timely truth and it was on my mind. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Having a positive mindset is not just about thinking on things that make you feel good but rather dwelling on things that will bring about a positive result. This verse doesn't mean that we should ignore the death rate of COVID-19 or the dangers and risks it confronts us with. It means just the opposite. It means that we are to be thinking about the truth of the situation. If we as Christians are going to react correctly to this situation, then we must evaluate all of the facts, all of the science, all of the history, Mm -hmm. and all of the biblical principles that are entailed with it. We cannot only dwell and study the parts that match public opinion or our personal views. This world and our wonderful country is really running in fear. And it's sad if we as Christians contribute to that fear by not presenting ourselves as level-headed and positive. America, it'll be all right. History tells us that this isn't the first time a pandemic has swept our nation and the world, and it probably won't be the last. Christians... Let's all remain calm. It'll be all right. (laughs) History shows us that the current, if you'd like to say this, the current government outreach or overreach is not so extensive that we can't use the opportunity to show that we are responsible, but yet still determined to find a way to have church and assemble together. We can do it. We just have to stay positive about it. Let's all take some time today to to look at all the good things that we have our situations, our family, our friends, our health, our salvation, Mm -hmm. our God. Let's be a beacon of hope to this world, finding more ways to shine the light of the gospel like never before. Because the truth is, we all have a lot more white on our paper than we do black dots. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sounds excellent. Enjoyed that. I just personally have some things I wrote down here I thought would be a blessing and uh, Mm -hmm. things that I thought about throughout... um, preparing for this broadcast because I have to actually make myself concentrate um, and think about the good. And I, mm-hmm. and I venture to say this goes hand in hand with that illustration. It's easy to find the bad. It is. Because it, it is, sticks out. It is more of a character challenge, a spiritual character challenge to find the good. So here's some things I found. Um, seven good things that this pandemic has brought to Christians. Number one, a need to spend time in prayer. Mm -hmm. James 5.13, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any married? Let him sing psalms. Uh, Secondly, a time of humbling. 2 Corinthians 12.7, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of of, uh, the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Mm -hmm. Boy, do we have a need to get off our high horses Mm -hmm. because we are right about so many things. Uh, pride is a problem. So this mm-hmm. is, this has brought a time of humbling to our people. Um, I, and I would venture to say probably one of the greatest areas 
is when you lose a right or you seem to lose a right and now you're scrambling to think, oh no, it's gone. I can't do it anymore. And, uh, and, and really it humbles you, makes you really wake up. Number three, a fresh awareness of Christ's power in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What an opportunity to be uh, freshly acquainted with the, with the power of God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, number four, it brings a thanks for the comfort of God in our lives. Second Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.3 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Boy, I'll tell you what, He does bring comfort in times like this. Uh, number five, it gives us compassion for others. Second Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.4, Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Number six produces an endurance and patience in our lives. Romans 5, 3, and not, only, uh, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And number seven, it reminds us that this world is not our home. Hebrews 13, 14, for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does give a different perspective on that. And mm-hmm. kind of like your illustration perspective is yeah. does affect how you view life in general. Yeah, and with your first point there, the prayer, it is really refreshing to see on Twitter hundreds of different men of God, college students, just different people calling in on that line and praying mm-hmm. together. Something that I feel like when this whole pandemic ceases, keep it up. You know, we're in a time where America needs prayer, you know? I really believe exactly. that in 9 11 gave us a window of an opportunity for revival, and we did not cap- capitalize on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, attendance in churches right after 9 11 went up for maybe a month and then went right back down. Mm-hmm. Um, now we can't see any movement towards attendance growth. And we have to really be serious about the things of God right? because our faith is being stretched here. And so let's not miss that opportunity. I'm always serious. <laughs> His phone started listening. Because it heard it something. It, yeah. it thought it heard Siri. Love when my phone, when your phone does that. I was about yeah. to say something and I lost track. Oh, you lost track? <laughs> yeah, I did. Well, another, I did. Good, another interesting point is the fact that this, this opportunity, this pandemic really gives us an interesting way to give get the gospel out. True. Mm-hmm. You know, those, the coronavirus tracks, they're not fear monger tracks. That's mm-hmm. they're really the complete opposite. And whenever I hand them to someone, I let them know, Hey, you know, give some facts about the coronavirus on the front, but on the back, it gives, you know, some peace, some hope right. mm-hmm. for tomorrow, for, for your life. The most important thing you can know. People always want to take that. Yeah. And actually I tried to hand it to a, a guy at, uh, Arby's and he had, I did hand it to him, but that was the second one. Someone else gave him one too. So I've not hey. met anybody that hasn't taken one of these from right. me. Right. And I've not met anybody that said anything. Ne- I've not met anybody in our town that's been negative mm-hmm. about these tracks. So. Yeah. yeah. I think one of, the only thing that I was going to say is, um, as much as just like you mentioned, you look on Twitter and you can see the, the, um, the positivity, the, the prayer and the different things that you see. It also, I've noticed that it's provided a time of self-reflection in my own life of, of stopping and thinking about, you know, is, is this something that I only do when I feel like there's a, you know, you think of the children of Israel, when did they come to God the most when they were in a time of need? Is that, is that what I, right. what I do is just when I'm in trouble, I go to him or am I always in a habit of going to him? So I no. think it's a, it's a personal challenge no. for me to make sure that that's the way that life is all the time. And just like this broadcast, you know, when we say testing positive for COVID-19, are we, po- are, are we finding a positive way to stay positive? You know right, what I mean? It's right. easy to look. And I think, um, I think as humans, we are, we are predispositioned to looking at just that, like you said, at that paper, looking at the black dot, mm-hmm. but finding a way to do the hard thing and look at the good, not ignoring the bad and pretending it's not there. Right. But part of positive thinking is thinking on things that will bring a positive result. Right. Doesn't mean you have to be and negative. And the Bible talks about what you put your mind on and how that mm-hmm. affects 
your your actions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad there's only going to be one broadcast because this is making me sick. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I'm just joking. I'm joking. The power of positive thinking. Right. Oh. Well, no. the world. Well, no, they got that from it, the Bible. So right. And I'm world, not. I'm yeah. joking. I'm yeah, joking I totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do. Actually, yeah. our whole movement needs to em- embrace the ability of both sides balanced right. in this proper perspective. It, and this so. is no secret. I'll let I'll let you talk in a second, Pete. We're, Let's having, go bad. we're having some issues with the live Are broadcast. We? Is everyone off of the internet here? I just want to double check and make yes. sure. Yeah. Everyone's off the internet. JT, you're off the internet. You're good. Okay. Just double checking. We're having some issues in the. Uh, Says the quality's good. Okay. Sorry, y'all. Just checking because people are having issues on the uh, on the live stream. So mine is having issues as well. I do we think need tell, that, we need to tell all positive. the girls to get off our internet because they're on the same. Are they on the same? Line? I don't. No, they're if on not, their own they're connection here. Oh, unless they're here on, on the on the. I, I will say this with with the changes with COVID nineteen and staffing around America. I wouldn't be surprised if there were you know issues with YouTube in there because I was having issues just uploading videos yesterday. And never be so. never fear. We'll always upload it three weeks later, and you can watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be a uh, Tuesday following. Yeah, but. yeah. What was so. I going to say? I, was gonna say I apologize. I meant to say because no, I, I saw acknowledge them in the, I saw in the chat. Go ahead, brother Peter. Yeah, I forgot what I was. Tell saying. us the good Sorry, you bro. got, bro. The good we've got. Well, I, I was just. A, um, it's good to see that there's churches out there that are trying to do the best they can in the situations that their state provides. I know my sister, she works down in Texas, Katy, Texas, at a Christian school down there, and they've done their best to keep their their ministry of a Christian school going. But their, their doors are still closed. They don't have students on site, but they're doing, they're sending home homework with the students. They're um, also doing online classes with them, so they're, I guess, video chatting and that kind of thing. But they're doing what they can. And of course, the, the same thing what the public schools and colleges and stuff like that are doing, but they've got a budget for that kind of thing where they can, oh, we can delve into this. But I know there's a lot of churches out there that these kind of emergencies that unless they already have a system in place where they're big on media or big on Mm -hmm. that, they they don't think or they can't. But there's some places and uh, hats off to those churches that are making the best of this situation and doing what they can with what they've got. uh, I think, sorry, just uh, earlier this week... uh, Pastor, uh, you you had mentioned your surprise at, at certain churches who had stepped up on their media and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You're like, wow, I never knew they could do that. Right. And yeah. apparently, they've got people in place, whether they uh, are volunteer or, or staff, that do have those capabilities. It, and this is a time where, yeah, now's the time to step up. Maybe all those media guys should get a medal at the end of this thing. They Ta-da! should they should like have a Sunday honoring all the media people who kept the live stream and figured out how to. Get it working or whatever. Yeah, we'll they get to stay home because that they. Day. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> in this day, you get to stay home and watch the live stream. <laughs> we did get a call from a preacher uh, this this week. He was asking about them upgrading their sound system. We've been in, in talks with them for a while, but he talked about how with this whole situation, they have had to basically, in an emergency, put everything together. And he said somehow it's working. He's like, he has no <laughs> idea how. Holy Spirit's ex- power. Exactly. It's just, hey. He has no idea well, how it's all staying together. Well, I was, the, power the, the perspective yeah. that, the thing that I saw that was really, really neat was the churches out there that probably had the p- capability of doing the live stream. I saw a couple of them, but really, really tried to still assemble together. I saw one church actually have like a, like a drive in crowd. What they did is they had all the, all the members drive into the parking lot and then um, they stood up and, and, uh, the pastor preached. They had right. service like on a raised platform in the mm-hmm. parking lot, and they just they did shortwave radio. Short, so people short could stay in their car, radio. leave the window up, and yeah. they could just tune to a specific station. And that was really neat. And I mean, here we thought of a great idea earlier this week when we were thinking about it. For all those churches, if you if if you want your government to let you start having church again real quick, start having <laughs> outside drive in, open air meetings, open air meetings, and and get really big speakers and really blast big, it, black blast the <laughs> and sound, preach against sin. <laughs> Yeah, all the neighbors will start complaining. Get Go those back people inside. inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that probably wouldn't work that way. But that was it might. Neat. that was neat seeing it seeing might. different churches it's really come up with all these different ways of still. So, what I'd like to do right now, if we can, let's open our lines up to sure. preachers. I want to call in, give a testimony. Uh, you call in right now. The number is. Nine two zero nine four zero eight two seven five. If you're having issues watching us right now on YouTube, we would ask that if you'd like to, you can switch over to our uh, our listening to just just on the radio. You can go to canyonradio.com, scroll down halfway down the page. There's a place you can just hit play. I promise you that will not be buffering. It will play exactly 
you know, I think it's exactly working now. Yep. If, if, the, if the YouTube's working okay, then that, that's good. But I just want to make sure and plug that. The number, though, for if you're, if you're a pastor out there and you're listening and you'd like to talk with us, tell us a little, a little bit about what, uh, what your church is doing. The number is 920-940-8275. I haven't heard from Brother Tyson today. No, I don't think he's on there Should right Marco now. Should Marco Polo him be like, where are you at, brother? Yeah. Is sure anybody calling in yet? Another interesting thing about... Uh, the good, the positive side of this whole thing mm-hmm. is for months I have been pre- in my prayer for like Sunday morning service. One of the things I constantly say is thank you for the opportunity for us to meet together and fellowship and be here at church to learn from you. And um, honestly, you get so used to praying that and having that ability that you don't really mm-hmm. think about it. But this last service, I, I prayed and I was talking about that and I was just like, you know, more than ever, this this means more than than usual. You know, just mm-hmm. thanking. You don't realize what you had until you, you until don't have you it lose anymore. it. Yeah, yeah. So cherish it. I think you know? a lot of people are. I think I think that's being seen in almost every area of life right now. Whether it be the store, toilet paper, it doesn't matter. It's like when you don't have something that you've ju- you're just used to having. It uh, it mm-hmm. changes your perspective on that. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. So I like to just. I'm I'm a pastor. Mm-hmm. I'm not calling in. But since nobody's called in, <laughs> did yet, you want to step out and call? Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say that I'm proud of the church. Our church just pulling together, doing what we need to do, and um, still caring about uh, the neighborhood and uh, mm-hmm. getting the new COVID tracks out there. I know the soul one in has been a little bit different, um, but just taking advantage of the opportunity to get those COVID tracks out there and and getting the gospel out. People have been getting saved during this time, and we're thankful for that. And it's exciting to really we live in a conservative area. And um, I think we have three cases in our county. There might be more than that now, but um, no, nobody in, in the hospital. Um, no. So things are okay here, and and relatively businesses are still um, providing Oops. services. And I, I haven't missed, um, you know, if I want to go through drive-through or something, I can still. It's amazing how our country can keep the fast food industry going. Right. And, mm-hmm. um, so. Things are good. Things are mm-hmm. good, and people are positive. And I'm just really impressed with our staff and their willingness to work together and care for our community. Mm-hmm. So, Amen. I know when we have a truckload of food coming in um, next week that we'll be giving out, I believe. And uh, so it's one of the things that our church is going to do, and just uh, announce it. We'll announce it on Facebook, and we'll get the word out there, and then have folks. We have a whole city block, so you can actually drive into our property and go right across the property mm-hmm. on the paved parking lot. And don't exit on the other side, so you don't have to yeah. even get out. We'll be handing pop the trunk. We'll toss it in. And we'll be handling handing food out and right. no, it just free and trying to help out and uh, gospel tracks and uh, information on how to be saved if they like and uh, just our way of loving on them. Mm-hmm. We've had quite a few. Um, do we have any calls right now? Nope. Let me give that number again. It's nine two zero nine four zero eight two seven five. If you are listening and you're a member of a church from anywhere, you can have your pastor call in and tell us about uh, how their church is handling the situation and some of the things that they've done to adjust. If, that number is nine two zero nine four zero eight two seven four. We've got Pastor Tyson has called in. Have you answered already? Is he on the line? Yes. All right, uh, Pastor Tyson. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, sir. Thank you for hey. taking the call there. And uh, tell us about what's going so, um, on, man. Uh, well, I mean, along the, I guess the same lines as uh, some of the things you've already said, as far as the benefit, the benefits of this current crisis, as we look at it, um, you know, I, I, the, what I've been trying to do with our folks is to remind them that, that God is in control, that, um, there's no emergency meetings in heaven. God's not uh, scrambling uh, because he didn't know this virus uh, was uh, going to wreak havoc on the world. And uh, because of that, uh, we recognize that God has a plan. And God is using um, this crisis, I believe, um, to soften the soil, if you will, of hard hearts uh, of those that are lost who may not be or may not have been as sensitive to uh, the gospel who are now um, willing to listen. And um, I would also say for those that are away from the Lord or 
uh, even those that have kind of left their first love to recognize what really is important. I, I would also say this, this whole crisis, uh, I think for the Christian should, as we see the world's reaction should just um, have us not waiting for um, the next tweet by our president, but be listening for the Trump uh, mm-hmm. because God, I believe is doing something in our world um, to draw folks to him. And uh, I believe Jesus is coming soon Amen. and uh, we need to be prepared. We need to be ready. And um, God has not given us a spirit of fear. And um, we, as Americans, we certainly have uh, the freedom to voice our opinions about what should or should not be done. And, uh, but ultimately uh, this world is not our home. We're just passing through mm-hmm. and uh, there's no viruses in heaven oh, and there's no concerns on, on the streets of gold. There's no social distancing uh, in heaven. Amen. And uh, I'm looking forward to the day when we can gather together uh, on the other side, if you will. So uh, I would just say, we just need to be encouraged that God is in control. He cares about us and we can um, share with him uh, our fears and our concerns. And I believe we need to get into the word of God. And I've told our folks to use this time um, to draw close to the Lord, to spend time with the Lord and, and to care about each other and to uh, be so conscious and not uh, waste this time. This needs to be a time of, uh, of reflection, a time of, um, uh, of getting things done and thinking about the future And uh, what a blessing to be able to be at this time. This I'll leave with this. Uh, I said this Wednesday night in our service. I said, you know, when God was looking down at 2020, he could have placed in this generation any Christians that have walked this this earth. But he put us here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, He he knew that this generation of Christians would be the ones that would be the salt and light in really a historic time in this world. And uh, we need not be running for the hills and looking for cover. We need to be looking for the Savior, and we need to reach out to our communities because they're scared. Or they're, they're searching, and we have the answer, right. and the Amen. answer is Christ. Amen. And so it's a blessing to be serving on the front lines with you guys. We appreciate all that you're doing. Amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Tyson. Thank you so much for calling and sharing with us, and uh, keep Keep up uh, the good work that you're doing there. Enjoy uh, the devotions that uh, some of your young men are getting to to do and be used. I, I'm very impressed with with the the young men and their love for the Lord and how they're expressing their their uh, encouragement to other sinners to get right and to saints to keep their head up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll talk to you later. See ya. Well, we've pretty much come to the end of this segment. Um, if we do have a pastor call in during the song or during the next part of the segment, then we will we will go ahead and have you uh, talk. We would love to hear from you, 920-940-8275. You can give us a ring at that phone number. Um, and as we draw this segment to a close, we're actually going to play two requested songs back-to-back here. And uh, the first song that we'll play is Nothing But the Blood um, by Cecily Hamilton. It was requested by Ray Lynn. And then the next song will be Stand Still by the Stephen Ray Nichols family, and that one was requested by Jewel. We will be right back. Thanks for listening. And honey, that sweet nectar. And once again, in the spirit of today's broadcast, we are trying to keep things positive, so we skipped the Grapes of Wrath segment and went straight to <laughs> and... No honey. wrath. Exactly. Just honey today. Um, we do have something special we're going to do today, and Pastor would like to tell us about yes, that. Yes, I've asked Dr. Harding, Chuck Harding, to call in and share with us what he's got going on today. Uh, I believe it's a prayer line they call in. Preachers are invited to call in. So is he on the line with us now? Brother Harding, you there? Yes, sir. Yes, I am, Brother Reeves. Man, it's good to have you on the show today. Would you share with the listeners listeners what you got going on? Well, what? My wife and I decided to do, uh, upon some urging of some good brothers, is to start a national call for prayer, a national prayer conference call. 
And so what we've done is we've just reached out to pastors, to preachers, to missionaries uh, all over the United States, and of course, missionaries on foreign fields, God's people, families, and we've had just folks call in uh, night after night, and we do this uh, 8.30 Eastern Time, uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, to around 9 o'clock. Sometimes it goes a little bit longer than that, but that's okay. But about a half an hour, and uh, we've had some um, wonderful pastors pray for us. Brother Shelton Smith prayed, uh, uh, the, the, of course, the editor and publisher of The Sword of the Lord. Amen. And uh, he gets called in, and, and uh, Mike Wells, uh, just a, a myriad of uh, wonderful pastors. Last night, we had a Medal of Honor recipient wow. by the name of uh, Gary Biker from Vietnam that called in, and wonderful Christian man, and wrote something that was... Uh, basically an encouragement, wanting to be an encouragement to the Medal of Honor Society, which he is the chaplain of. And it's been just such a wonderful thing that God used that he read that to us last night, Brother Reeves, and uh, I'm going to be putting that out on social media later on this evening, uh, just so everyone can have uh, access to that. Amen. But the, uh, the, the number, if, if your listeners want to call in tonight, uh, is, uh, and I'll just wait for a minute. Maybe some of them are scrambling for a pen. You can also get it on my Twitter account. Uh, and uh, that Twitter account is uh, Dr. Chuck Hardy at Mission to the, the number two America. And uh, so they can get it there. But the number to call in is 425 436 6354. 425 436 Six three five four, and then you enter the access code to the prayer conference call eight five zero seven two one, and then pound. So eight five zero seven two one pound, and uh, you can pray along with us. We have uh, some wonderful men of God praying for us, leading us to the throne of grace tonight, and just asking God for two things. Number one for his healing hand upon our country mm -hmm. to stay this virus. And number two, for a national revival that we pray begins at each and every one of our individual hearts. Amen. And so we know this, we, we know this, Brother Reeves, that when David numbered the people, it was a sin, and he asked God to basically uh, deal with it. He didn't want to fall into the hand of man because he wanted the mercy of God. Yeah. And God did. Uh, kill a lot of people, but I think David was amazed how quickly God did it, and then the mercy of God as well. I think David was not surprised, but definitely welcomed the mercy of God when he stayed his hand when it came to their uh, national capital of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And so we want God to stay his hand upon our country. Amen. And, and, and we want him, of, of course, to simply uh, break the hearts of people. I know that pastors' hearts like yours mm -hmm. and many other pastors are breaking because they can't have services with their people. That breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. and, but, I, you know, I, I just, uh, I believe this. I believe that there's great power, number one, in prayer, and great power in collective prayer. Amen. And so we're going together tonight. There'll be six pastors and uh Five pastors, actually, and one evangelist that will lead us to the throne of grace, while many, many other people uh, pray along with us. And so I would welcome everyone in your listening audience to join with us tonight. Certainly appreciate you, uh, Brother Reeves, and allowing me to just uh, kind of come on and, and make this announcement, and uh, a longtime friend, and Amen. certainly appreciate uh, all that you're doing there in Nebraska, and through, of course, your radio station, which I think is is wonderful. Oh, thank you, Brother Hardy. I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as far as I'm concerned, in the years of ministering as a pastor and being saved as a Christian, I don't know of another individual that has done as much for our independent Baptist churches being connected with uh -huh. Washington, D.C., like Dr. Chuck Harding has. Mm -hmm. I appreciate his faithfulness, he and his wife, uh, just uh, giving their life to reach into D.C. 
see and bring uh, our men of God back into our capital to be an effect and influence on our, our legislature. And so thank you so much for Brother, Brother Harding for doing this. And we definitely want uh, folks to join you in your prayer hour. Uh, that's 425-436-6354. And then you'll enter the code 850721-POUND. And you'll be able to enjoy a time of prayer. I believe tonight, Caleb Garraway, Dr. Bob Smith, Tracy Killinger, and uh, Pastor C. and Kevin Birdsong will be praying, leading in prayer tonight. Thank you Actually, so much. Uh, yes. uh, brother, if I may, just very quickly, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to let you know, actually, that was... Uh, that was the other night. Oh, okay. uh, there'll, there'll be uh, Oliver Reza is going to be praying tonight. Lou Guadano, uh, Guadano and Brother Guadano pastors in New York State. Uh, Steve Hobbins, Bud Silva from California, and Mike K.S. Stanley from Iowa. Those are the men that are going to be uh -huh. praying tonight. And, just, and if I may just quickly let you know, on Monday, we will have a 96-year-old Medal of Honor recipient by the name of Herschel Woody Williams, the last Marine still alive from World War II that received the Congressional Medal of Honor. He's going to come on and address us and pray for us on Monday night. And so thank you so much, and please uh, uh, come on tonight. And then Monday night, every every night we do this, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday. Don't do it Sunday night, but Monday through Saturday. So, Brother Reed, uh we love you, appreciate you, God bless you and all of your efforts in your ministry there in Nebraska, brother. Thank you, Brother Chuck. We'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. Okay. Thankful for those who are invested not only in our government, but in our churches, and we're thankful for the ministry that Dr. Harding has. Again, if you wanted to check out his Twitter, the Twitter handle is Mission the number two America. If you'd like to look that up, it will give you all the information about the call that you need if you'd like to be a part of that. And let's go ahead and go back to the segment where we were mm -hmm. talking about, and honey, some great things that have happened. I know we've been pretty positive throughout the uh, day, and we were trying to stick with our time. And guys, we're four minutes over, but you know what? Close. It, it is. was okay. good. We are close. Yeah, it was good. We're a lot closer I, I than think, we've ever been. So. I think the Anne honey can just stand a, Brother Harding being in part of that. That's fine with me. If we want to close it out, or if you guys want to do your Aunt Honey's, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. I'd, I'd love to do my Sure, aunt. go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. <clears throat> so my, mine's short anyway. So it's been cold and rainy today, but this morning I got an iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts, put it in my car, and then uh, four or five hours later, forgot about it, got back in the car, grabbed it, and found out. It's still cold. <laughs> it's the blessing. The benefits of it's cold the weather. blessings of cold weather. You can Amen. get an iced coffee and it's good all day. Speaking of the cold Thank weather you. or the, the the weather that's going on right now, David and I did some uh, work around the properties this last week. We did uh, some stuff at the daycare. We did some stuff here on the property on the on the church property. Just getting the lawns manicured and ready to go, fertilized, seeded. Uh, pulled up some of the the grass that had been killed by the salt over the <laughs> over the winter, mm -hmm. and uh, we were just just getting it ready. And of course, those days it was pretty decent. I mean, it was warm. Nice it was nice Tuesday, out. Yeah. And then right exactly it when it needed to, we got rain. It's mm -hmm. been kind of rainy yesterday and today, so which is exactly what you want to happen right afterwards. We don't have to worry about running yeah. around trying to sprinkle everything or get it wet. It's, it's happening by Perfect. itself. So amen, amen. Well, I've got one. Uh, today, um, me and JT were out visiting, and we uh, went by a lady. Uh, who had called her church about a month ago and wanted to ride to church. And we've been by every week since then, but she had actually gotten sick. And it wasn't COVID-19, but she had been showing symptoms and said, oh, you know, I'm going to stay home and do that. But we w went by to her today and she was like, oh, yeah, you guys came back. <laughs> see me. I I'm, I'm well. I'm better. I'm not showing any symptoms. I'm coming to church tomorrow. Amen. So that was a blessing to see that. People Praise are getting better. Uh, even though you might have a colder flu or be sick right now, guess what? You know what? You'll get better one day. Mm -hmm. Uh, my awesome. honey is spending time with my honey. Uh, this <laughs> this week uh, at the hospital, they asked anyone that could uh, work from home to go home. My wife already has that ability to do her job for home. That's that's kind of the reason that we, we went the direction with her working at the hospital. And now she uh, was able to spend the whole week, first time, uh, to spend a whole week at home. And I think it's been good for her. There's... Um, less stress and she seems to have a little more energy. So it was just, it was good. She's my best friend, my BFF and uh, sure do love her. Thank God for her. And I know she's listening. So I love you, hon. 
and thank all of our listeners. Thank you for listening today to the ninth broadcast of The Brook. We're glad that you are all able to join us. Please be watching our Twitter, uh, the Canaan Media and the Canaan Radio Twitter for announcements coming up, whether it be the upcoming store that we'll be getting up right. or uh, whether... Uh, that or the broadcast, this broadcast, which will be available next week. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you so much for joining us for this episode of The Brook. We hope you will join us again next week, same time, same place, for another fun-filled show. David, Pastor Peter, JT, thank you for a great episode this week. You can find this show in podcast form on our website and on YouTube and on iTunes next week, hopefully. Don't forget to like <laughs> and subscribe if you joined us today on YouTube. And before we go, we would like to leave you with this verse of encouragement Peter has this week's verse. And the verse is Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. And with that, we'll play the final requested song. This song was requested by Ariana. It is Happy Am I by the Vandenbergs. The Brook. A ministry of North Platte Baptist Church.